Let's see if I can find a spot to blog. There aren't loads of people. Mm -hmm. We stayed another night at Skogafoss campsite and then headed down the road to go to our next destination. So I'm at Rainis Fiara Black Beach with these beautiful sea stacks in the back. And I'm not sure if they're called the same thing or if they're called something else, but they are out there and they are beautiful. Now, the sun has literally just come out as I decided to vlog after I've been taking photos for two hours. But hey oh, that's the way the world works. So it's been very flat today. And um, you've got to be very careful of the waves here especially if there's a red alert on do not go onto the beach because these waves will wash you away. I've seen videos on TikTok of people getting washed down the beach, but there are literally hundreds of compositions here. There's a cave I can't get to around there at the moment. And I've got lots of kids running around because it's Easter Sunday and it's absolutely rammed. Um, I've been doing some long exposures of the rocks, some zooming in, some minimalistic. I've taken loads of photos. There's seabirds everywhere. My lens has been shat on. I've been shat on. Kaz has been shat on. So birds are great for composition and being in the shop, giving it a little bit of atmosphere, but they may shit on you. Something to be aware of. But this place is, a, is really nice, really nice. I've been loving doing abstracts recently and I think these three examples are really good. What I'm looking for is just trying to find repeating patterns, um, sort of leading lines, the same sort of things I'm looking for in general landscape composition, but in a material. And this time it's basalt and that was my subject. Just looking for contrast really, because in black and white photography, that's what you really want is contrast and patterns. Persist and ye may win or get very wet, but at least in a little bit of sunshine because the sun came out. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. I'm sure the audio is going to be terrible because of these waves crashing. So I'm just going back over all the compositions I did when it wasn't sunny. And I have also been trying some new compositions. I got really, really good photos, zoomed in on the rocks between the sea stacks and the cliffs. There's hundreds of seabirds flying around and I got some sort of like layers of waves. I'm gonna show you in a second, but it's absolutely perfect. And with the sun out now in the late afternoon, just giving it some side light, ah. It looks beautiful. Sounds of nature is amazing. Oh, I love it. This is all about fast shutter speed, trying to capture that raucousness of the sea as it crashed against the rocks and all of those seabirds flying about. And then I got down low to do a really nice bokeh shot up to the sea stacks. However, it was still sort of mid afternoon, not that great until we got to the evening where the sun and the sky just popped. I tried to fly the drone about, but it was a little bit windy, so I decided to get the camera back out. I got back down again and boom, check that out. Those lovely golden bokeh, a bit of lighting on the side of that wave as it comes over. The sea was nice and raucous around there. So I managed to get some lovely wave shots, but I was really just focusing on that sky and the clouds lighting up in the last 30 minutes of the day before the sun went down behind the horizon. 
here I was trying to get some of the waves sort of backlit as the wind was blowing out towards sea and blowing the spray backwards. And then there was a wedding shoot going on as well. This couple walking across the ridge line from where I was standing. I just, I need to find these guys and send them these photos because I think they're amazing. That sky is just awesome. But after the sunset, we drove back up to the campsite at Skogafoss to spend the night. And the next day, this is where we went. So this is Cavernafoss another waterfall. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of waterfalls on this Iceland trip. So let me just show you where we are in a little gorge going up <clears throat> and it swings round. The path goes up and around. You can actually get behind this waterfall. In the winter it might be a little bit difficult and there's a lot of icicles and when the sun's coming down those icicles are falling down as well so it could be dangerous but at the moment the path is free of any icicles just overhead so it's not too bad. Lots of compositions here. Um, up the valley from the path at the top as you just come over the ridge to see it. And then obviously from behind looking out, a nice wide, I'm shooting at 16 mil and I can just fit the whole cavern in with the, the uh, waterfall coming down. And there's another point just at the bottom where you can get down and look up. It's coming to the end of winter, but there's still a lot of ice around, so I've been using that ice as a bit of a foreground on that composition looking up, some great shots there. And I've also been just doing a bit of textures and abstract because the way the spray comes off, it's the spray that's forming all of the ice around the base of the waterfall. And it's creating some amazing ice textures. So I've got a load of photos of those. I'm gonna show you a couple of them. But yes, we're here in the afternoon and as the sun passes over, the sun comes down the valley. So this is not a sunrise location, I don't think, or a sunset location at this time of year anyway. Remember to check photo pills and see where the sun's going to be and when the sun is going to be coming down the crevasse because you want a bit of light coming down to light everything up in there. But really, this is a fantastic place. It's always great to get behind a waterfall. Lastly, location. This is right next to Skogafoss. It's four minutes drive to get round to the car park. You do have to pay, but it's a five minute walk and you're up here, which is great. And it's a lot less busy than Skogafoss is. Skogafoss has hundreds of buses and thousands of tourists coming every day. And this has been about 50 people in the last four hours and it's Easter Monday. Um, so if you're gonna go to Skogafoss, get yourself up to this waterfall as well, because it's quieter. Actually, it could be a little bit more idyllic with the gorge and the river running through it. So, yeah, it's brilliant. Let me show you some photos. I've actually got quite a lot of photos to show you. This first one was from the bottom looking up towards the waterfall itself. And then the second is a drone shot. Just simple looking down on where the water is landing. Then you go behind the waterfall, you can go all the way around and shoot back here. Very difficult with the sun right behind the waterfall. Or you can stand just behind it and get a nice central view, but you need a really wide angle here. This is 16 mil. On the way back, we turned around and shot this lovely photo, Kaz standing on the rock in front of the waterfall. And here are some of the ice sculptures. They are just amazing. The way the spray creates these sort of alien landscapes. I absolutely love it. Just zooming in a little bit macro and nice light. Then from there, we can head quite a way across over to Yolksalen, which is the Glacier Lagoon and the Diamond Beach. Today we're at Yolksalen Glacier Lagoon. And I'm facing this way because I think this is the way the wind's coming. So I'm trying to keep the audio all right. But there's, I don't know the names of them and I'll, I'll put them up here. Some huge glaciers back there coming down into this lagoon and these icebergs break off and float through. And there's a little gully down there that goes out to the sea. So the icebergs come through and go out to the sea and then they wash back up onto the black beach over there, which is the diamond beach, which is where we're gonna go next. It is a sunrise location, ideally, I think or a sunset, depends on what time of year and where the sun is. But 
This morning we were going to go for sunrise, but the weather has been absolutely terrible. Uh, we've had a couple of whiteouts, lots of snow and really strong winds today, so we've been taking it a bit easy. But photo opportunities in this lagoon are probably more around trying to isolate some of the icebergs. They are quite dirty. They're not as blue and as beautiful as I thought they would be, unfortunately. But nonetheless, bring a telephoto lens from the shores and then you can go out and try and pick out some nice icebergs with some of the mountains in the backdrop. There's a lot of birds that fly around here and there are also just some seals over there as well, swimming around. So what we're going to do is park here and then head over to the Diamond Beach and have a play around there. Uh, scope out the situation and maybe come back when the lighting's a bit different and the wind is a little more less brisk. My hand has already gone red. I've just taken my gloves off. It's incredible. Unfortunately, I did struggle to get some compositions here, but with some geese flying over, it added a little bit extra over the mountains and blue glacier ice. I did return on a separate occasion and get this photo where the sun actually came out and gave some nice lighting across the lagoon. Yep, and here's just some more geese flying overhead. Welcome to the Diamond Beach and just look at it. Look at all of these diamonds, isn't it amazing? So, I was just up at the Glacier Lagoon up there. I'm not going to pronounce the name again because I can't remember it. And the glacier breaks off, comes down through the lagoon, down through the estuary, and sweeps out into the sea and then gets washed up on the sort of beach here. They just melt in such an awesome way and they give all of these crazy shapes. And if there was some light, they would light up beautifully, maybe at a sunrise or a sunset, depending on what time of year and where the sun is coming from. Obviously, you'll need to plan for that. Today, it is really gray and miserable, but the sea is raucous. You'll probably be able to hear it in the background. It's very loud. The waves are huge today. And by that, I got wet feet because the shot you want to try and take here is to have a really wide angle, get down low behind one of these ice blocks down on the sea with an ND filter on. Um, and as the sea is going back out, take your shot so you get these lovely streaks and leading lines up and around the ice block. Get the detail in that ice block as well. And if you've got a nice sky in the background and the sun, even better. I don't, I just have a load of waves and just flat grey sky, unfortunately. But hopefully it still looks a little bit moody. So you're going to get wet feet. That's going to be the case. Or what you can do is, as the waves are going back out, run, <laughs> plonk your camera down, take your shot, and hope for the best. That's one way not to get wet feet. But there are thousands of these ice blocks down the sea and <clears throat> they melt in all of these funny ways. This one's got loads of holes in it. This one's got like loads of striations and lines, but you get all these lovely sort of scoops. So just find one that you like um, and go and take some photos, basically. But yeah, this is the Diamond Beach. The conditions weren't great that day, but it did allow me to practice shooting the diamonds on the beach and get my eye in for the shutter speeds. So here is a solitary diamond, a solitaire if you will, just in the sand on its own, no waves. Given the conditions though, I did focus more on the wider landscapes that day and also the very, very choppy and windy sea. So I was just stood there with my camera on a tripod for ages, just watching for the right waves, watching for the seabirds flying over, trying to get some sort of minimalist shots, and then hoping that the sun would come out. I returned once again to the Diamond Beach because there was a little bit of sun out five minutes ago, just gone behind some big clouds. And I thought it'd be nice to get some of these diamonds with some light shining on it. 
now this time of year the sun's gonna set behind me i think is it maybe summertime that it's more south i'll put it up there is it summertime or winter time when the um sun will rise or set behind and backlight the ice but um yeah it's been all right actually i've got wet feet again of course but with a little bit of light you're getting a bit more of textures coming out of the the diamonds as it were so yeah it's quite nice uh, let me know what you think in the comments the moody day the flat day or the day with a tiny little bit of sun which ones are better here's the first one from the cloudy day and now i'm going to show you a few from the sunny day where there's a bit more light you can see that the lights just sort of lighting up the clouds in the background you get a bit of backlighting on the waves from this angle with these new diamonds washing up on shore and you just get that extra depth but let me know what you think if you've made it this far across the south coast of the Diamond Beach, then you just have to make this trip up to Vestral. Welcome to Stocksness and the massive mountain Vesterhorn. I've been running around now for about 40 minutes trying to find a composition in the dunes. And this, look, look, the sun is just peeking up. <laughs> and then Vesterhorn in the background, it looks Fantastic, I'm so excited for this. Oh, I, th I think I found the composition. And oh, oh, what I'm doing is getting some leading lines in the, in the blown lines in the dunes up to some of the bigger mounds with the grass on. It is still winter, so this grass isn't coming all the way over the dunes like I've just seen. Some other people down there, a bit late looking for compositions. But let me show you what I've got. But it's looking amazing at the moment. I just pan around, you see the dunes. I'm going to go down by the sea in a bit, maybe get some reflections um, and then maybe the rocks at the back, right hand side out of shot to get like um, some crashing waves because the, the sea is quite choppy today. But yeah, this place is epic and I think I'm going to spend tonight here and maybe tomorrow night, so sunset and hopefully some aurora tonight as well. I think that's going to be the plan. I don't think I want to leave here ever. Gee, look at the sun! Okay, light's coming, I'm going, and I'll talk to you in a bit. Quick update. The sun came up and it's creating this awesome light over the dunes down there. I'm gonna push you out, see if you can see it. It's been amazing. I've been running around the dunes trying to find some compositions. It's very difficult to try and keep the edges clean get some leading lines of these uh, the wind-blown sand down here. You can see the sun just creating all of these lovely shadows on these little dunes with the currently dead grass and the black sand. And after I've played around with the drone a bit, I'm going to go down to the beach and see if I can get some reflections or some long water shots, but it, it looks amazing. Let me just stick you on a wider angle. Okay, this thing's amazing. It's going to follow me. Um, you're in a wide angle now and you're coming in for a look on me as I talk to you. It is a bit windy. I'm not going to try not to put too many uh, footsteps in the dunes. But if I swing around here and uh, carry on talking to you, then uh, it's gone the wrong way. Typical. Okay, I'm a little annoyed by this thing now. I'm not sure where it's going or how it's doing this thing. I've never used it before. So here I am in the dunes. Follow me around drone, like I'm some sort of idiot in the sand. I'm gonna come back up to Kaz on my camera. But I'm gonna go and take some photos. I'm gonna show you the lovely ones I got from first thing this morning. No, God! of these dunes it's completely lost me no god please no 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 and then we're going to head down to the beach and see if i can get some nice leading lines with the shoreline going up there 
So, let's crack on the walkie-talkies. And uh, yeah, the walkie-talkies. We bought these so we can communicate over distances to take photos. Because otherwise we were doing hand signals like the guy that leads the plane in at the airport with the paddles. But there you go, let's see if these work. Starting off with the Instagram pleaser, the yellow jacket, a nice four by five crop. But I'm just loving the light from this sunrise. I got so many good photos, but this is a classic. The landscape view, Vresterhorn from left to right, fully taking up the frame. Then we went down by the shore and I started playing around with the waves receding to get these long exposure leading lines and also tried to get some reflections. I think I have a better reflection, but I like this one with the line running up towards Kaz. And finally, going to the end of the beach where the rocks are and the waves were crashing around them. Bit of long exposure, lovely foreground, great background. We then spent the middle part of our day going to Hoffen to the supermarket to go and get some snacks and some treats but then returned back for the evening where the sun and the sky popped off. Put the drone up and I spent the whole evening with the drone actually. I wanted to get a shot of myself with the drone and some leading lines with the dunes. And here it is, that sky was perfect. The leading lines were there, nice transition from foreground to background. One of the other shots I really wanted to get was this road to Stocksness with the dunes either side and the beautiful sunset. And lastly, I got a nice drone panorama shot. I think this is a super wide, nine stitched photos. Still at Stocksness, trying to Vesterhorn Mountain and didn't get any Aurora again last night, unfortunately. So it doesn't look like Aurora is gonna be a thing here, just gonna leave here today. However, I woke up this morning a little bit late for sunrise, rushed down, and the dunes are all frosted over, so you've got this white frost on the black sap, and it's fantastic. We're taking a few photos of that, which I'll show you in a sec. And we're just heading down towards the beach now. I get the drone out to do some social media buggery, you know. Instagram only likes reels these days, so let's make some reels take some photos and the reflections is this morning there's actually a couple of tiny little clouds just clipping the top of the mountains which is really nice yesterday the sky was completely clear now i've got a little bit of interest in the mountain tops it's beautiful so yeah they're just about losing their color now unfortunately so that's why we're just going to head down to the beach do some drone stuff I tried to get the same compositions as last time. Lovely leading lines, sand patterns, but with the frost on this time. And then we put the drone up. I got a tiny little cas on the big black beach in front of the right-hand side of Vestrahorn. Absolutely beautiful. And to finish off, another drone shot, full Vestrahorn, lovely contrast in the sand. I've still got plenty more videos and photos to share with you, including these locations, which I think are even better than the ones I've shown today. Some absolute classics in there. So subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified when I get off my lazy ass and finish editing the next vlog. If you enjoyed the video, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. And while you're waiting for the final part of the Iceland trilogy to come through, why don't you go watch the first part if you haven't seen it?